time I hit the button. Okay, it says we're live. <laughs> What's live. up, everybody? I'm Rebecca, and you are watching Rebecca the Reseller live for the very first time on StreamYard. <laughs> and as you can see here, I have a very special guest with me, Quemby the Grateful Queen. I'm so excited to be chatting with her again. Um, I just want to give you a real quick, like, lowdown real fast about why we're doing this. I have been watching a lot of YouTube, as I'm sure many of you have been, and Quemby has been putting out amazing videos all about everything she's been up to. I've been watching them all. And one of them was on all the stuff that she bought on ThreadUp, sourcing online from ThreadUp to, you know, flip on eBay and Poshmark and her variety of platforms. And it was like, oh my God, that was such a great idea. Cause I recently did the same exact thing, but completely different. And I never thought to do it the way she did it. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we both came on gave like a summary of what we did and presented both options so that people could, because all of our business models are different. We may all go about it differently. So I thought putting both of the options, and then I even thought of, we may talk about it, a third option. <laughs> so we could talk about that too. Um, so let me let Quemby introduce herself. We'll let everybody kind of filter in and she can tell a little bit about what she did and then I'll tell what I did and then we'll all just chat about it. So thanks again for everybody to be here. Go ahead, Quenby, and let everyone know who you are and what you do. Hi, guys. I'm Quenby, the Grateful Queen, here on YouTube. I'm a part-time reseller. I've been doing it about eight years. I know it's – I always track how long I've been reselling, Rebecca, by how old my son is. There you because go. my <laughs> son is going to be nine in July, so that tells me it'll be nine years of reselling. Um, that's a long time. And I sell, I sold mostly on eBay in the beginning and I've been selling on Posh for about two and a half years. Um, for me, it's a part-time gig. I have another full-time job, although right now it's stay at home. I am giving kind of like full-time effort to my reselling business. Right, right. And, um, and I have a YouTube channel called The Grateful Queen that's all about reselling. Yep, I put a ticker there at the bottom. I'm so excited. It says to subscribe to you there, your IG. It's all going to be linked in the description below. And very official. <laughs> all right. And I want to say I see my friend Kelly Schaffner in the chat. Um, hey Kelly, she and I are going to do a video together hopefully soon all about free inventory oh, nice. and um, Style on Sale is here and Diva D 04DS and Jody. Hey guys, thanks for joining. Hey everyone. Jody helped me out a lot the other day. I went on to test this and then he popped in and I was like, I'm just testing. I don't know what I'm doing. And they like was showing me everything. So it was just awesome. <laughs> Do you want to wait a couple minutes for people to, to come in or do you want to No, start? I think we should just get into it. Yeah, so go ahead and and for those that haven't seen the video, I linked it in the description below um, so that you can see you know everything that she got. She did a whole haul and explained everything. So if you want to give them like a summary and then I can um, you know do my summary. So I'll talk a little bit about how I'm using thread up during stay at home. Yes. So um I've used ThreadUp for a long time, you guys, and what I've usually done is order the rescue boxes, Yeah. Um, which are basically mystery boxes. I just opened one yesterday, Rebecca. I don't know if you got a chance to it's see not. that. I watched it. <laughs> it was so good. Oh, my God. Do you think that was a really good box? I think it was. I, think I was, was like, so if you guys get a chance, I just put a um, video up on my channel, The Grateful Queen. Uh, today and it was a mystery box. Yeah. A rescue box. And I got a really good one. And I've mystery boxes are always a risk and rescue boxes are a risk. Right. So during the stay at home time, I've used that up in two ways. I've ordered two rescue boxes. Do you think everyone knows what rescue boxes are? Or do you want to explain it? I mean, rescue box, yeah, we can explain it. Yeah, I mean, rescue boxes is basically anything that hasn't sold on ThreadUp that they had listed that didn't sell or anything that they didn't accept for one reason or another. Maybe it has a tiny flaw or it's missing a size tag or it's just overstock and surplus from some of the major contracts that they got. I know when I used to get the rescue boxes, I used to get a lot of like Style and Company and Macy's house brands in them plus size. Okay. Um, and I, I used to do a lot of rescue boxes and I have a bunch of videos up from a while ago and I was big very bullish on that because for a mom like I especially did it like you know over the summer or when you're just coming back from vacation you can have items show up to your door and how awesome is that where you just have to click the button and order it um now obviously we're 
looking at them for a different purpose, but um, you know, still right. they're a risk because you just don't know. You didn't hand pick these items. And so it can be a flaw. It can be a brand that you wouldn't have picked up. It can be something that isn't going to have a high resale value or maybe can't be sold at all. Um, and everyone's business model is different as far as like how, I don't want to say picky, but how discerning you are with the brands that you sell. I think a lot of us have opened the floodgates on what we're selling in our stores these days, just because we need to do what we have to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I see. there's a lot of different things that you can do with the rescue boxes. Yeah. And Diva D says, um, rescue boxes are scary. They can be so hit or miss. That mm -hmm. is exactly true. True. So I don't want to give anyone a false idea of the threat of rescue boxes. I've done so many of them and I've done the designer boxes, which are hard to get 90 bucks for five designer items. I've done a lot of it because I just have that in my business. I like to mix things up. It's just what I do. So it is true. You can get a dud of a box and yeah. it's like so painful. I've gotten some boxes like, oh my God. But I do think there are different ways to mitigate the risk. Right. When I bought this most recent rescue box, it was 25 women's items for $60. That's a lot of items. So chances yeah. are you're going to get enough stuff to make your money back and then some. So I right. think getting a little bit of a bigger box is better than getting like 10 items. Right. So um, I got a great box. I'm so, so, so grateful is all I can say about that. And I have another one coming, a men's box. Um, I don't know why that it's, it's taking a long time. So if you have any idea that thought that you want to get a rescue box, order get it. it now because it takes like <laughs> right. So um, that's one way I've used ThreadUp. But the one Rebecca and I wanted to talk about was just buying straight from ThreadUp, yep. going onto their website and individually picking items to buy for your reseller business. Mm -hmm. And she and I realized we did it really different ways. So we yeah. thought we'd share them with you. Hey, Michelle. Um, so what I did for the first time, mind you, um, was I just went on and shopped ThreadUp. And the way I shopped it was this. I looked for brands, styles, and sizes that I already know sell well for me in my eBay and Poshmark business. So I went on and looked for kind of like bread and butter, you know, right. like my 25 to $35 flips. And I looked for things like a big thing I ordered that I talk about in that video I put up is I looked for like J. Jill linen wide leg pants size large. Because I know come spring and summer, that is an item that moves consistently for me in the $25 to $35 item. Right. Also an item that you can get affordably on ThreadUp. Right. So my cost of goods for each item was like $5 or less. Right. Which was great. Which is great because for me, in my personal business, I feel really comfortable selling J. Jill pants that I bought for $5 for, let's say, $30. Right. I do kind of more of that, like, quick flip um, model. I don't tend to be, like, a high-end seller. I've sold a lot of high-end items, but it's not, like, my ongoing business model. Right. So, and so I looked for brands and styles I know, sizes, and then I looked for things that were, like, 50% off. Yes. And... I found that I found it challenging to find items that are like going to sell for much more because on thread up, they're still really expensive. Even if they're like, even if they're 50% off, for example, I'm like, Oh, maybe I'll get a bunch of, um, I don't know, Patagonia stuff. But if right. I get in Patagonia, even on 50% off, it's still like 20 bucks. And I'm like, right. I can't make enough profit on that. Right. So I ordered, um, I spent $111 and I got 16 items. That's crazy. Some of them were less than five. Some of them were a little uh, more, but it ended up being about five or $6 an item. If I remember correctly, right. And I'm super happy with what I got. And I can give a little bit more detail about um, how I think I got such good stuff. What are you laughing at? Jody said that we have the same exact door colors. If we were in the same house, <laughs> yeah, she's like in the next room. Coasts. <laughs> I'm, I'm in Northern California. Where are you, Rebecca? I'm in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> oh, that's right. Totally different coast. What's the weather like right there now? Oh, it's gorgeous. Like, like I, 
I have to say that, you know, obviously this whole time is weird because we're kind of home anyway. Like I'm normally a stay at home mom and a reseller with Geo. So I'm always kind of home anyway, but now I'm not in the thrift stores. I'm not doing these other things when I go out and stuff. And so I'm enjoying the day outside a little bit more because I'm keeping track of him and we're having quality time with my husband and the weather has made it so much more enjoyable because it could be like 90 degrees, but we've had a lot of really nice cool days where it's 70 and 75 and whatever. And it's just, it makes it being home and not having that much else to do a lot more enjoyable. So we've had yeah. the weather you, you two there same like I'm in Northern California. So don't mistake that with Southern California okay, I still had seasons. Um, I don't get snow, but um, we've had a lot of rain, mm -hmm. a lot of gray days, but the last few days have been beautiful and it really helps my mood. Yeah. When I take a walk and it's sunny and all the tulips are popping up and <laughs> the trees are blooming, I feel so much better. Right. Um, but I noticed a couple things in the chat. So, um, there like was one, says, yeah, there was one really in the very beginning real quick. And I, I don't know if we missed over that. And then we can talk a little bit more about our sourcing methods. But it said, I've tried to... Uh, Diva D-O-4-D-S says, I've tried to source the outlet, but it always comes up blank. Do you know what she's doing wrong. And I did try to go to the outlet once or twice and the same thing happened to me. So I'm not really sure what is the deal with that. I've only ever done. It's only available, it's only available to certain people right now because oh. it's new. So I have it. So I just looked on it today, actually. Oh. After I got that good um, th re rescue box. I'm like, I better get another one. It's going to take three weeks to get here. But um, so the outlet, it's like a new thing they're doing. Mm. So it's not available to everybody yet. It might kind of be like in beta, you know, people say they're testing it out and everybody doesn't get the feature all at once. So I don't know if it has to do with whether you've already shopped with them a lot. I don't know why, but I do know that not everybody has it yet. That's a good point. I did not know that. Okay. So that's and thread up is also similarly, they're doing outlet stores, like actual storefronts, kind of like the Goodwill yeah. outlet in a few areas. Um, some people have a thread up outlet now, and I'm jealous of that. I'm like, yeah. I would love that. I've seen a couple people's hauls from that on YouTube and I get emails and it says thread up IRL in real life, which I think is really funny. <laughs> what is it? It says IR, it says thread up IRL for in real life. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I see simply Dana joined us. So I just want to say hi to her. I just want to make sure we said hi to everybody. And I oh, style on sale too. I want to say hi to you. Thank you guys for joining. Okay, and simply Dana did an amazing video um, for resellers with the hashtag resellers stay home. And she put it up on her channel the other day. I was like, I, I kept waiting for it to be over and like more and more resellers with their messages kept coming. It was amazing. Like she had so many resellers on there giving their, you know, little, tips and words for staying home during this time and all that. I thought it was amazing. Oh, cool. I'm definitely going to have to check that out. Cool. Yeah. Um, cool. But yeah, no, we're not in the same house. We're on separate coasts. I actually <laughs> used to do my videos at the end of my desk with my rack behind, with my clothing rack behind me. And then I recently redid the reselling room. So now I could be over here and have a light and actually put my legs under my desk. Oh. at the end of my desk where you couldn't put your legs and my legs kept falling. It's like my feet kept falling. It's like, it was so uncomfortable. So I just read did everything. But yeah, I should hang something or make it. A yeah. Little you, so you have a reseller room that's just reseller. dedicated to reselling that you don't share with anybody else or anything else. It took three years for me to harp on my husband to take over the shared office that we have. <laughs> But it's now the reseller room. Oh, so it does have chat. Do you guys have a reseller room or where do you do your reselling <laughs> stuff? I'd love to know. That's my dream to have a reselling room. It's not big, but it's very functional. And over time it collected a lot of nonsense that I don't actually need in here, but I put in here. And so I just cleaned it all out. I put all the th things that I don't need at my storage unit. And now it feels so much nicer, so much more open, even though it's a tiny room. I mean, it's only maybe 10 by 10 or something. Like it's not very big. So, but I can do all my YouTube stuff. I can do my photos. I can do my shipping. I have a clothing rack. Like it's legit functional. So it definitely That's makes awesome. a difference for your mood to want to do work in your area when everything's already set up. It's a huge time saver and where you have everything working for you, you know? Yeah. That ergonomic thing I think is really important. Jody says, um, 
living my room. living room is my reselling room. I live alone, one bedroom apartment. And Style on Sale says, that's my dream too. I share my husband's tackle room in the basement. What's a tackle room? Is that fishing? Well, my husband got a shed. Like he bought a shed to put all of his stuff and he built it in the backyard. So I'm like, listen, you have a shed. I have no shed. I need a room. I need a thing. <laughs> but also too, because you can't put the clothes out there. It's Florida. So you can't have clothes out in a shed. He's like, oh, well, we'll build you a shed. I said, no, I'm not doing it. I want a shed. I want to. I, um, <laughs> I have my stuff forever in the living room. Like, you know, I decorated my living room to my taste, kind of nice. But you'd walk in and one whole wall would be lights, bins of clothing, yeah, measuring I'm tape, like over. taking over. Hey, Lindsay's posh loft. Um, yeah, exactly. so I finally moved it all out of the house and it's like in the garage and then I have a little corner of my therapy office. So it is really great to have a dedicated room. That's like dreamy. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Um, yeah. Lindsay's Poshloff just asked if I took, um, and I don't know how to say her name. I know that's her Instagram handle, but her name starts with a K. I think it's Chrishell. I'm not exactly sure how to say her name, but yes, I did take that course. I have a video coming out perhaps tomorrow on what I'm sending in to thread up in a new Lux box. And I'm going to be doing some update videos on the Lux boxes that I've already sent. Um, I highly recommend that course. I'm not going to give away any of the things that she says in that course. Cause that wouldn't be fair to the people that purchased it and to her that spent okay. a ton of time creating it, but it is fantastic. But I am kind of going to be sharing the things that I learn along the way coming up here soon um, from as a result of that course. So yes, I, and there be the course in the description because I'd like to check it out. Yeah. Because I now I'm thinking, oh, I discount. Yeah. Um, it was fantastic. And that's the first course I've ever taken. Honestly, I've never taken anybody's course on anything before, but I just felt like I didn't know anything at all. And there isn't a lot of content out there about it. And I took a chance and it was Great. I highly recommend it. So check out the discount code if you're interested on that. And then maybe I'll go into mine and that way we can talk about the differences a little bit between what we did. Because when I saw your video it was after I had already done my order. And it's funny because you said you did 16 items for $111. So, so, I, did. Total. <laughs> so I did five items for $116. So wow. We about the same amount, but you got 16 items and I got five. And the difference is, and it's just so funny because this is completely out of my character to spend that much on an item. I am not a pay up person. I am a bins, digger, cost of goods as low as possible kind yeah. of person. But lately I've really tried to open up and explore other things. So I'm like a hundred bucks. I can, you know, try with that. And so the goal was to go on and buy items that were on the thread up Lux brands list. So okay. that if I wanted to send in a Lux box and I didn't in the wild myself and certainly not now, since we're not physically thrifting, um, I would have some Lux items that would qualify my box to send in. So that was my whole goal is I specifically went on there looking for items that were undervalued, you know, um, disproportionately lower priced, but that still qualified on the Lux list so that I could send in my boxes Lux and not a regular clean out kit. So I went specifically with that in mind. And I figured, you know, it's an item that would get me into the Lux program. If it sells on thread up great. If it doesn't, I can always reclaim it and get it back through the Lux program for free. And then always try to turn it around on Poshmark. Or if I do go back on eBay, <laughs> I'm currently broken up with eBay at the moment. Um, you know, then I can try to sell it there too. It's still a good item. It's still a good brand. So I went in, I got um, a couple of skirts. I don't know why skirts, but that's just where it ended up. Um, an M. Missoni, um, two 3.1 Philip limbs, an Alberto Ferretti, and something else. Something so else. So let me just make sure I'm understanding you because this is like so different for me. You went on to thread up and, linen and bought brands that you know are in the thread up Lux program mm -hmm. so that you can send them back to thread up. Mm -hmm. And this way not work. work. Like, I don't even know. This is kind of weird. Like, it didn't sell on thread up, but I'm going to buy it and send it back to thread up. It's kind of like what we do. Some of us do to like relisting an item yep. on Poshmark. It's kind of like you have the item on Poshmark. It's got 30 likers, but no one's bought it in months. So then you just relist it again and give it a brand new fresh face and maybe some new 
likers. It's sort of like that same yeah. idea, right? Is, you know, one could make the argument that if it's a good item, you just yeah. need to find the right buyer, right? It's not necessarily, I mean, it could be a bad buy. Perhaps I overpaid. Perhaps it's never going to sell. I mean, who knows? I could have just lost $116, but I'm willing to risk that and, and try out something new and see what it opens up for me. Right. And, you know, and it gets me in to sending all the rest of the items that are in that Lux box that I'm going to send in that includes that particular item in yeah. to potentially sell. So let's say I lost some money on one of those items but I sold 15 other items at a profit, that's still gonna work out in my favor. So again, it's just like kind of finagling yeah. things, um, yeah. see how it goes. Because when you just send in a regular clean out kit to thread up, you have to pay if you want your items back, you have to pay if you um, want it done quickly. But with Lux, you get both of those things included as long as you have those Lux brands. So if I have Lux brands, um, like the higher end designer brands, I can send it to them. They'll take what they want. And if they don't want it, they'll send it back for free. Yes. If it's Lux. Okay. I've yeah. never done the thread up Lux. This was my um, first time. This was my I first just time. have a harder time selling like designer items. For example, I've got the thread up designer box several times and I get these purses and I'm so excited. Like, Ooh, a Prada bag. Uh, Kate Spade bag, and then they're yeah. just harder for me to sell. I don't, um, not saying they haven't sold because I have sold some of those bags and I have made, I don't know if I've ever actually made my money all the way back. It'd be good to go back and look at that, but um, they're harder for me to move than like yeah. my no, I agree. Well, there's just less buyers probably that are looking yeah. for that particular thing. There's, you know, maybe you don't know as much about that particular type of style or whatever is it current or not versus like. You're well versed in the J. Jill linen pants because you're selling them all the time over and over. But the product yeah. is a few and far between kind of thing. Um, but also, too, the, the difference I'm thinking, because when you did your video, you highlighted specifically, which I thought was dead on one, buy enough items to get you free shipping. I thought that was a great tip. Yeah. If you spend $79 yeah. right now on thread up, you will get free shipping. And that is important. Yeah. And then the other thing that you said too, now I just lost it. Gosh, darn it. Was, what was I going to say? I can talk, I can tell you what I said rather than have you. <laughs> free shipping. And then it was, oh, making sure that you're checking like new or new with tags because of how they disclose the wear and condition. And yes. so I did that same thing. So those are two things that we both did similarly, but you were searching for the bread and butter recognizable and the arbitrage there. And I was searching for specifically the Lux brands, knowing full well that I was going to pay up and trying yeah. to find the hopeful arbitrage there. So we were both basically doing the same thing, which I just, like I said, I was just so fascinated by the fact that it never occurred to me to do what you were doing. Um, Let me just say it. real quick, hi, like yeah. I see Karen at Red's Revivals came in and DL from PA. Hey ladies, I love thread up, but I feel like it's better for buyers than sellers. We said hi to Karen, I hope. There's and Lindsay's Lindsay wrote back. Lindsay wrote back. I, I hope I get as good a box as Quimby. I mean, I've gotten a lot of duds, but this most recent box was really good. Yeah. Um, um, just for Lindsay's note back real quick on the course. Like I said, I'm not going to ever reiterate what she says in the course because that's not fair to the people that bought it or to her for creating it but my review of i did an instagram post about it um so yeah you're not me on instagram it's um at rebecca the reseller and then i also have i recorded it yesterday hopefully it'll go up tomorrow what i'm sending in to thread up in my box coming up and i talk about the course again and then i have another video coming up with some thread up tips that's also building upon it. So if you want to check those out and then maybe that would give you a little bit more in context of, of my thoughts. But like I say, I can't, I can't say more things. I'm really incorporating it into my business model now as a result of this. Um, How much was the course? Do you it, remember? It should be, I think full price at 147. Okay. Maybe it ends in a seven, um, something like that. 147 and then I think with my code you get $40 off so maybe that puts it 
Maybe it's 137, it puts it to 97. I don't know, you got $4 off, I think, with my code. I think I paid at her one of her release prices. Like, you know, when people do courses, they release it lower, then they raise it, and then it goes up to full price. <laughs> so okay. um, I think I came in at the middle, like not the cheapest amount, but not the most expensive amount of what I paid for it. And like I said, okay. that was my first time ever buying a course. I'm, I'm not a big believer in paying for things like that unless you really feel like it will save you time in getting the information or you can't get the information on your own at all um and because so there's a lot of content there's a ton of free content on youtube yeah. um like that's how i've learned so much like i oh, have a youtube channel but i watch a lot like before i buy something like a thread up designer box i go on and i watch like every thread up designer box i can unboxing because then I can manage my expectations. And a lot of this is managing your expectations. Yes, I agree. Her hand gifts and finds us here. I'm waiting for my rescue box to ship, fingers crossed. <laughs> it took for my rescue box at least two weeks to ship and then it, a few days once they shipped it. So it was probably about a two and a half week wait. I'm still waiting on my men's box. I ordered it March 28th. Today is April 14th, still not here. So, um, it's taking a long time. However, um, when I shopped the way Rebecca and I are talking about on thread up for individual items, as opposed to a rescue box, they, they shipped really quick. I got that stuff super fast. Right. No, I and agree. I'm really happy with my purchases. I think I just want to highlight again, when I was shopping from thread up for individual items, look in the item condition. And I chose to stick to things that said, like you might mistake this for new because right. thread up another tip is that they don't provide a lot of information and they don't provide a lot of pictures of the item. There's like one or two <laughs> pictures and the information might say something like, uh, used with some minor wear stain and you have no idea what that is. Stain. Yeah. You don't know where it is. You don't know how bad it is. They I just wasn't willing it. to risk that if I'm paying no, I for agree. the six dollars an item so it, it was time consuming so um i don't know how long it took me to order those things but probably an hour or two i think but, that go yeah. ahead i'm sorry no i'm sorry you're done when you're done i was just gonna say what helped me frame that was hey when i go to the thrift store i spend a couple hours digging through so i'm gonna spend a couple hours digging through thread up looking right. for items exactly same thing like that's your virtual thrift store for the day you're flipping through the racks you're clicking on items i think that's a great way to look at it because that's one of the reasons why i never really sourced online prior to this like i would go on and order a rescue box because that's a one click i've ordered liquidation pallets that's a one click but i've never really spent the time to go through and find the arbitrage in other people's poshmark closets or buying things on auction on ebay and i know that people do great with that and i felt like it was such a waste of my time because i'd go in and i'd get in there and then i couldn't find anything else to make the shipping worth it or i'd go ahead and go to bundle, make an offer to someone on poshmark and then they wouldn't go for it or you know i try to be like sneaky, like I'm going to buy all your stuff and then sell it myself. You know, like I, I tried all these things thinking it was a way to get out of having to drive to the bins. You don't know what you're going to come away with the bins. Like I wanted to make it a viable option. I never felt like it was possible. Um, and then, like I said, now we're kind of forced to do that. So I've done a little bit on Poshmark as well of, of sourcing online. But like I said, when I saw your video, then I was like, ah, like you can do this and you can find value for regular brands as well. And here I just <laughs> did the complete opposite thing that may or may not work out. Who knows? We'll see. But, but, but I like that. I like, I think you and I are similar, Rebecca, and that we both try things. Oh yeah. Like we both, I do, I do like digging through crap at the bins and I do retail arbitrage where yeah. I go to Ross and I buy new tags item a little higher. I think I've always been a proponent of mixing things up. Don't have all your eggs in one basket. Don't just right. have one business. Don't just sell on one platform. Don't just sell so niched. I mean, I've kind of spread things out, tried different things. It just yeah. seems like smart business. Absolutely. And gosh, am I thankful for it now that I have more than one business that we're all doing stay at home. Um, I think you and I are similar that way. No, I agree. And I, you know, I think a lot of entrepreneurs are probably learned by doing, let's see if we break it, you know, type of people as a character trait, perhaps like you're willing to risk it to go out on your own. So you're willing to risk 
sometimes your time in trying to figure out things that are going to work for you and you're able to like evaluate on the fly what's happening. Like, let me try this, see if it works. If not, I'll pivot. And I think it can be a good thing. I just talked about this with Chris um, from Daily Refinement because I interviewed him on my channel and I said to him, you know, that's one of the things that I also got from him was, you know, constantly trying to improve and always doing things better. But I think I took it as let me try a lot of different things. Let me go this way. Let me go that way. And while you're zigging and zagging, you're never actually <laughs> making that much progress forward. And so I feel like that's kind of almost one of the things that has held me back a little bit in my business. Maybe I'd be a lot farther along if I had just stayed with one thing and kept pursuing rather than literally trying out a lot of different stuff and zigging and zagging along the way. It's, pers it's personality. Like I, I appreciate, what's his name again from Daily Refinement? Chris. 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 I appreciate his stuff. Yeah. Um, and, but I, what I recognize is, wow, I just have a totally different philosophy. Like, um, and that's okay. That's one of the things I love about being self-employed and being a reseller right. and working from home and running your own business. Right. You get to take all this information and decide what works for you. Like his business model wouldn't work for me because that's not the way I'm wired. And I take a lot of joy in my business. And mm -hmm. I think he's extremely concrete and logical and round. You know, it's just a very different thing. I appreciate right. it all. Right. He's right. fantastic. I love I that. That's going to work for a lot of people. Yeah, I'm a little bit of both because I can be, you know, on the colorful side with the creativity and all of that. And then, you know, I'm also very analytical and like trying to figure out a plan and like stick to the plan and make a system and a process. So I think I joke, I'm like a creative person that got trapped and raised by like, you know, organized people. <laughs> Or like, let me like, would it work for you to use that kind of model where you're like, okay, I'm selling, I got the market on these women's underpants new in the package, and I'm gonna get a thousand of them and just sell those women's underpants yeah. because they're they're reusable. Um, it's essential item people need, and I'll make a good profit on it. Would you be happy doing that in your business? For a lot of people, the answer is yes. I'll sell whatever's gonna sell and make profit. I don't care what it is. And for some people, it's like, oh, I would lose something if that was my business model. So I think you just have to evaluate for yourself what yeah. what works. Right. I don't know about underpants specifically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there as an example, but you get my point? No, I think I might do a lot of underpants. But I do think, because I think about that sometimes. Do I want a curated closet? Do I want something? You know, like, what would I love to sell and what do I hate to sell? And I can tell by what's on this rack. And what stays on this rack every time I go to take photos. I pick and choose the things I want to take photos of. And there's still this blazer sitting over here. There's this other, I hate blazers, yet I have these blazers. And they're going to sit there for a while till I get up, you know, enough, till I'm pissed off enough that I still have these blazers to finally. Right, take. right. My sister is a reseller. She loves selling blazers, sells them all the time. And I hear about people that sell blazers like hotcakes. But for some reason... I just hate selling blazers, you know, so I don't know, but I feel yeah. like, you know, I would like to sell all the cashmere in the world. Like if I could, if I could just have a store of cashmere, that's what I would sell. <laughs> well, see that there you go then. <laughs> It'd be so seasonal. <laughs> Let's see what the chat is saying. So Dale, who is DL from Pennsylvania. So I just to subscribe to grateful queen. Thank you so much. Um, everyone's talking about who has great content about thread up and stuff. And Lindsay's posh cloth says I'm sourcing online in my own closet. Luckily my personal items are selling rather quickly and for good money. Nice. The downside is I'm not excited to list my own items. Right. <laughs> I know I've sold a few things from my own closet too. Um, Her hands gifts and fine says I'm sourcing live thrifts. Lots of fun. What does that mean? What's live know. thrifts? Hold on, sorry. <laughs> I know the chat's um, all moving. Oh, the happy gingers are here. Hey. Maybe people doing a lot, like I thrifted this and they're doing like a live on Instagram or on Facebook Ooh. where they're showing it and then you can buy it right there, like a live Ooh. thing. I've maybe. never done that. I don't know. People do them. I know that people have been successful with them. Um, like, like on Facebook. Yeah, exactly. That's okay, cool. I've never done that. See, I like trying all different sorts of stuff. Right. I, I no, mean, I be Great. careful, make sure you don't blow the bank if you don't have the resources to do that. But um, I like experimenting. It keeps it interesting for me. 
sorry. Lots of good people. Thank you guys so much for joining us in the chat and leaving your comments. <laughs> so have any of you, because I, a few people said they've sent in items. So has anybody actually sourced on ThreadUp or did you come in just hoping to see what the different ways were? I'm just curious, like as a poll, if anybody's done it themselves. Um, or like if you've had a really good flip from ThreadUp, because like yours has anything, have you even listed any of the things that you, not yet, I haven't right? even listed because. Yeah. So um, I'm just curious if our ideas are work, like if it's going to work. <laughs> I mean, you. I feel pretty confident because I've, yeah. for me, I've sold these things a million times before. It's not like a big risk. It's like I've been selling eight years, right. almost nine years, and I've sold J. Jill size large linen pants over and over and over. I don't think there's yeah. just gonna be. So for me, it was like, okay, I need inventory. That's the other thing, Rebecca, was that I need quantity right now. I need inventory because in my business. I believe listing every day as much as you can, yeah. um, as consistently as you can, keeps the flow in your store going, right. keeps sales coming in, keeps offers coming in. I need quantity to list. Like right. I need what to list your, every how day. Many, how many do you try to list a day? Um, realistically, um, and I have the two platforms, um, my goal is usually like 10 a day, but I probably if I'm being totally honest, I probably get to like five or seven a day, but I list right. every day something. Sometimes on Sunday, I won't. Like if I'm taking a day where I'm not, you know, I'm not having a business day because I'm with my right. family or something. Hey, right. Carla Mackie, good to see you. Your denim box is coming. Um, I just talked to you today, didn't I? Yeah. Um, so I needed quantity. I needed items. Yeah. I needed to list. I try and list about 10 a day, but it, it's not always 10 a day. Sometimes it's five or seven, but I try to list every day that I'm working that's um, I'm just to make daily sales. Yeah, no, that's where I'm at. And I'm not on eBay, so I'm just doing Poshmark and, you know. Not on eBay. Weird. Wow. When people tell me that, I'm always like, what? Because yeah. I started on eBay. It's like my zone and I make sales on eBay every day where Posh, it kind of trickles in more for me. I mean, I think it depends, you know, it's where you put your attention or what you're most comfortable with or, or just what you have in there. But I was on both for a while, but I recently got rid of my, um, photographer. We parted ways. And then I just recently, because of all of this, let my virtual assistant go. So I could really just see what I can get done myself. It's been a long time since I've been by myself doing my business. And so I really wanted to get back to the basics and like, get to know everything again. You know, how do I like to take photos? Is there anything I want to change in my process? How do I like to list all of that? So I felt like if I'm going to get rid of everybody, I need to keep it simple. And Poshmark is simple for me. I'll eventually go back because you can't, I feel like you can't make, maybe one can. I don't think that I can make the money I want to make in the end by only being on Poshmark. We'll see. But and have you ever done cross listing, cross posting? Okay. Yeah. I that makes I had, my VA doing it. I had my VA doing it. So I never needed the software and the software wasn't out. Like I had my VA for three years. I only just, yeah. recently, you know, uh, um, let her go. So that when Vendu came out and list perfectly and these things, I had, I had no need because I had her. Um, now if it's just going to continue to be me, I would definitely look into them. Um, but I'm not there yet. I need to like, yeah, I felt that way for a long time, like simplify. Cause I'm a part timer. So I'd see everybody doing all these things and I'm like, gosh, I wish I could do that. But as a part timer, I had to be careful, yeah. but I do, I am. Um, so I just recently got Vendu for cross posting. If anyone's interested, I do have a link for 25% off. I just contacted them and got it. It's in my description okay. section of my video. Oh, good. I regret like, why did I wait so long to cross right. post? I just thought in my mind, I'm like, I can't do another thing. And that's another thing. Yeah. But it is so easy, so fast, so inexpensive. I'm like, it's one of those things I kick myself. I wish I did sooner. Yes. I cross post from eBay to Poshmark because eBay is a little more complicated right. to list on. Poshmark is really simple. It is like a minute or two per listing. And then my item gets seen by all of eBay's buyers and all of Poshmark. It's kind of a no brainer for me. It's right. like, wow. Um, so I highly recommend doing it. It, you know, it's really easy, yeah. easy to learn. And then I just think, um, you get your, you have the same item, but you get way more buyers eyes on it. So it just makes sense to me. Right. I just want to point out this one thing that we had here because it was from, yeah. our, from Lindsay's Poshloft. 
I'm on thread up daily. I just, oh, here, wait, I can do this. Let me try to do this. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> Yay. I know. Here. I'm always learning these things. This thing is so cool. I just have to like get used to it. So she picked it up for $22 on thread up and then flipped it. Did you flip it on thread up also? For one nineteen, or was it flipped to somewhere else, Lindsay? I'm just curious. But I'm wondering what kind of athleta jacket <laughs> sells for hundred and nineteen dollars. It must have been new, but like I didn't think their price points went quite that high. That's awesome, though. That's, That's awesome. good job, Lindsay. That I would love to know more about that. Athleta is one of those brands that I also looked for on ThreadUp, but mm -hmm. it was just too expensive, even at fifty percent off. Um, well, and that's to, what I was. Go ahead. Yeah, it just like I was saying earlier, like if the price point was so high, I didn't know if I'd make a big a good enough return. But obviously, Lindsay's figured that out. Right. Awesome. The thing that was really good too about when I was watching your video and how you went about it, because um, I was looking for brands that were on the list, but you were looking for brands that you were familiar with. You were looking for the size that you knew you had sold before. Like it was like you were doing your own comps. It wasn't like you were finding something and looking at other people's comps. Like you were going and targeting things that were based on your own comps. Exactly. That was very smart because that's like a very deliberate, pretty much you're taking as much of the risk out of it as you can. So for you to feel yeah. comfortable spending that $5, but, and was is the five dollars a lot more, or it's about the same as what you would normally pay if you went to like your local thrift store? Well, I, I didn't want to confuse it too much, but um, so I bought one hundred and eleven dollars for sixteen items. A lot of the items I bought were like three fifty, but oh. then I paid up a little bit more for some other items. Like if I wanted XL J Jill women's lag and look pants, um, they were more. But I was like, yeah, I'll pay seven for those because I know I can get 35 for those. The other right, ones I might right. get 25 or 30. So right. I just kind of like you can average it out that way or we could look at exactly what I paid for each item. Right. But for me, it was looking in my own eBay store and being like, what sell? What do I know? What do I know is tried and true that will sell? I'm not going to get stuck with these items because they've sold for me year after year after year. Yeah. So seasonal wise because you're looking at linen things for the spring and summer like you said like you knew that you're going to start needing those things because that's what you're selling given the time frame so I feel like the way you did it was very deliberate and I think people could do that very same thing that you or I did and just like you know just find a cheap thing or just find something they heard of maybe not do all the research and then get themselves in trouble so definitely uh -huh. advocating for that <laughs> definitely so, yeah that's a good point yeah, because it's like yeah. I saw Land Shark Picker just showed up, so I just want to say hi. Um, thanks for joining. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that would be my suggestion is like look in your store or closet, look at what sells for you, yeah. get a sense of what that is, and look for that. I mean, and I went for quantity, like you went for quality, maybe getting more item, more for that item. So that, normally that's a great business model or two Rebecca because it's like hey it's the same amount of time you have you can list the item it's it saves your time because you're not listing 20 items you're listing three right and you get a lot more money for your time so a lot of people do that it actually sells it actually <laughs> based on that at all the master plan actually works out because like I said it is very different for me normally I'm a get it as cheap as possible person but since I can't go to my bins and I can't you know do a lot of the normal things that I would do um, locally, I figured why not? Now's the time to try, you know, something. Plus I was all hopped up from taking the course. <laughs> so. oh, right, exactly. No, but that's good. It's like, I think I could do both and. I could do yeah. the method I use, which is get all my bread and butter stuff, get the quantity, but why yeah. not also say, hey, let me look for a few higher end items, pay a little more for them, but I know I'll get more. It's like you could incorporate both at one time in one order to get you over to the free shipping or whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I think that's, I think good. that's good. Um, does anyone have any questions? Um, because we're probably going to wrap up here in a little bit. Like, does anyone have any questions about the methods that Rebecca and I used for, um, thread up anything you want to share with us, comments or questions? I do see Michelle B said, do you do free shipping on eBay or the buyer pay shipping? Me personally, I do free shipping on eBay unless it's going to be expensive to ship, like a like a heavier weight item. Then I ask the buyer to pay for priority. 
Um, were there any other questions in there, Rebecca? And Rebecca's not selling on eBay right now. No, I'm not on eBay. I'm just keeping it simple with one Poshmark closet, but I've run the gamut. I've done multiple Poshmark closets. I've done and eBay and Mercari and Kitizen. And right now I'm like, no, 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 no. I need to keep I like that about you though. I like, I like, like, it. like, I cannot be doing all this crazy stuff. Um, God bless everyone that's doing all of that and can handle it. But like, because I had helpers and now I'm down to me, that's enough of an adjustment. And then add on top of it, the homeschool, everything going on right now. Oh, right. No, no, just Poshmark, one thing, that's all. And then I will build up more slowly later because I, I get too, like, I get too crazed when there's too many shiny objects. <laughs> so. Yeah. But I do like that about you and about your channel, um, Rebecca, that. You, you're you're trying different things and then you're very thorough. You explain to everybody what you're trying and there's a lot of great information on there and you've yeah. tried a lot of different things. I'm, I have no problem sharing it all. <laughs> I over explain. <laughs> I like that though. I, yeah, like that. I, think, I think, you know, everybody finds the people on YouTube that they dig, right? You know, like not everyone is for everyone and that's cool. You know, I don't expect everyone to dig my channel. That's fine. I'm doing a lot of things now I took a little break. I rebranded. I used to be the reseller mom show. Now I'm Rebecca the reseller because I just felt like I didn't want to alienate anyone anymore. And I felt like there was a small subset of people that weren't moms that when I said, Hey, to the moms, like it just, you know, I, I went in niching down thinking that that was the right thing to do. And it might've been at the time, but now I think I'm ready to kind of broaden it a little bit. So I'm excited. Lots of, lots of cool new things coming on my channel. Like I said, you've been posting way more videos than I've ever seen. They've all been awesome. Like you're oh. really driving your groove too. And it's been fantastic. Yeah. I mean, so. I can right now because of stay at home. It's like, normally <laughs> I have another job. I've, I tried to do like one or two a week, but I'm home. So I'm trying to take advantage of that. Like, I hope this comes out the wrong way, but it, I mean the right way, but it's like, um, this is an extremely hard time for most yeah. people in a lot of ways. And it's also a time of a lot of opportunity and I'm trying to keep my head in a good space and I'm trying to stay grateful and focus on, well, what opportunities are in this hard time too. And for right. me, I get to put a lot more attention into my reselling business right now, into YouTube, into um, things in my business that I've always wanted to do. Right. It's a time I get to do that. So it's yeah. like, that's what I'm doing. I think the reset button right now is, it was much needed for me. I mean, it's a different time. Like I don't feel like I have more time because I'm not at the thrift store. I have different time. Cause now that time is filled up. Like Gio used to go to a part-time school. <laughs> now he doesn't. So, yeah. he, you know, he's with me all the time. He's four for those that are, you know, maybe new here. Um, so it's different time, but I do think it's a good excuse for those reflections for that reset button, whether it's for your personal life, you know, I'm getting out and running more and doing those kinds of things, trying to yeah. be more healthy. But then also for my business, I did a video the other day that was like six ways to improve your business during stay at home. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. And I'm actually thinking of doing like a, checklist video where it's just like ideas. Like I'm not even going to explain them. I'm just gonna be like, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this. And eventually somebody will find one thing in that video. I'm sure that they might want to do. So right. I think we're all just brainstorming ways. And that's why all the content right now from all the channels is so awesome because we're all thinking about it differently and presenting these ideas that just would never, occur, you know, like your way wouldn't have occurred to me. My way maybe didn't occur to you, but right. we benefited. We may, switch you know and try the other one's strategy so doing the video today was great and you just you see where we end up hopefully in only a few weeks hopefully it's not months hopefully it's not months <laughs> Get a day at a time well thank you so much for having me on uh, i i love talking with you and talking to people in the chat it's always so good the connection's really important right now mm -hmm. for no, all of us, I think. so perfect and i just want to say like this whole StreamYard thing, you know, they're not plugging any of this, but man, this was like, so <laughs> for a non-tech person, in case anyone out there that, you know, is not a tech person, um, Quemby encouraged me to do the live because I was just going to record it because I'm not used to like trying tech things, but I'm happy that she pushed me to give it a shot and it worked out really well, I think. So here's to trying new things and having yes. your reseller friends encourage you. <laughs> So uh, Quimby's information will be down below. Anything else you want to leave on a last note? 
No, I'd love, thank you guys so much. I'd love to see you over on Instagram or over at the Grateful Queen on YouTube. On your channel. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Be safe, be healthy, stay inside, and we'll catch you next time. Bye, Bye guys. guys. All right, what am I hitting here? And broadcast. Yes. <laughs>